All right. Today is October 28th, 2011. This is Lucas. Got a nice uh, 5904, I believe, is a model on this one. It's a three-phase motor, uh, closing 12-inch, variable speed. And uh, one of the things I want to talk about today, a couple of them, but uh, one of the primary ones is how to bleed out the hydraulic system on these lathes. Okay, so they can be a little uh, problematic. This one happens to work extremely well. And uh, today I just found a real easy, quick way to bleed the system. So the first thing I want to mention is uh, one of the uh, materials I like to use as a hydraulic fluid is actually just a straight automatic transmission fluid. The ATF uh, has a very low viscosity. This happens to be Mercon, Dexron. I believe that uh, any of the uh, transmission fluids will work. I have this particular uh, fluid here in my, uh, my oil can. I use this actually in different places on the lathe. Because I'm not a production environment, a little bit of uh, low viscosity oil goes a long way and it doesn't really have to uh, stick to the ways extremely well because uh, I can add more of this as I go. I typically oil the machines uh, every time I use them. And uh, also this is good because it doesn't uh, attract and hold swarf. So, with that said, uh, it also works well as a hydraulic fluid. Let's uh, just go through the, uh, the mechanism I found for uh, actually bleeding these. So, one of the things I, I noticed is that, uh, I know I'm turning this with the lathe off, the uh, motor off, but uh, we're going to correct that in a moment. One of the things I noticed is that uh, when you, uh, I don't know if you heard that little burp, but when you come back, you can hear that this system is actually open from here, uh, from anywhere on the high pressure side to atmosphere. So at the low end where our speed is low, if we uh, lock this back, just with a simple vice grip pliers, the system's actually open. And uh, what I found is that, uh, you know, I've gone through the factory recommended uh, bleeding procedure, and what I found is that's not a very good method. So uh, it's uh, not real conducive to uh, getting the system bled out. So once you have uh, the low viscosity oil in the system, this is a way to get it to bleed out. So you can see here that I'm just a little below half on the uh, reservoir. Typically what I've done now is just uh, taken um, the, uh, the cable a little bit and that's what this is doing is helping move air up the system in here and then of course uh, when that volume comes out the oil goes in. So I've actually been able to monitor this and watch this level drop as, uh, as I do this. Something else that happens is once you uh, once you do that, we're going to fire up the motor now. You can hear the my rotary three-phase converter in the background. I'm going to turn this on, and uh, we're going to. You can see that that uh, the system moved down here. We're on a uh, on a low speed right now. So uh, let's take a look and see where we're at. I'm going to zoom this in just a touch, and. Uh, We can see the, the uh, motor turning down here and where the pulleys are. So when you first start this, you won't be able to get, as long as there's air in the system, the pressure that you build up with the piston in the, uh, in the master cylinder here won't be adequate for uh, pressing the springs in the reeve drive. So later on, once you get the air out, then uh, your pressure can come up. What you'll find is uh, early on, you won't be able to go through the full speed range. You'll only be able to maybe just change it a little bit at the high uh, once you get the uh, indicator here at the high end. So this is, uh, I just pulled off the, uh, the vice grip player off that cam, and now we're uh, going to go through the full range of motion. So early on, once you start this, you'll see that the, uh, you, may, you may only be able to go from like here to here with it over the full range of motion. But later on, once you get all the air out of the system, you'll be able to get the full range of motion out of it. So that's the high end. So again, we want to bleed it when the speed is essentially at the low end. And we keep it that way by clipping that vice grip on the, uh, clipping that vice grip right here on the cam at the low end level. So this is that high speed. Bring it back here and there's going to be some spring pressure that's trying to resist what you're doing here. 
there. That's from the clockwork spring that's inside this housing. And that actually resists, or counteracts the back pressure in the system that's generated by the uh, spring down in the reef drive, acting through the hydraulic system. So that's part of the uh, adjustment process. The other thing I wanted to mention is that this belt has to have a certain amount of tension on it. You don't want it too tight is it'll actually put more stress on this bearing and the headstock bearing at the uh, outboard end. So if it's too loose, you'll see this thing flapping once uh, we engage the, the uh, spindle. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Now we've assumed, let's assume that you've got your system bled out. And I just want to make sure that this doesn't flap around too much. So, and then this is in reverse. It seems to be a little quieter in reverse. I'll put it in forward in a minute. Now we can now monitor the uh, the belt and make sure that this belt, this one, doesn't flop around too much during that full range of, of speeds. So I did have to tighten this up earlier. I had to tighten that belt up, and the way you do that is by loosening these nuts and letting that, uh, there's four of them, there's two on each side, letting that carriage drop down a little bit and tension up the belt. So this is the secondary belt. The primary belt is the reasonary belt, the secondary belt is this one. So now you can see we got a real nice range of motion on the entire system. We're going to off, uh, another nice thing is you want to make sure that the, uh, uh, that this doesn't change, you want to leave it, you want it to be able to set a speed and then stay there. And this one's working really well, which means that the tension in the clock spring is adequate to counteract the pressure in the, uh, the back pressure in the hydraulic system. So I'm going to move the camera here and just show the uh, reeve drive in action. So you can see that. See the slave cylinders, there's actually two of them down here. They're actually pulling, pulling this out and tensioning up that uh, reef drive. Probably making uh, everybody nervous that I'm uh, doing this without the guards in place. And uh, we're going to cut everything off and I'm just going to make some comments here. Okay, so uh, that's the reef drive. And uh, if we look here in the uh, reservoir, this is actually down a little bit. So they're probably still bleeding out a little air. I'm going to give this another shot of uh, my uh, transmission fluid. And uh, you'll have to, as you first uh, set this up, put this in the slow speed, lock the cam, keep this open, strum this uh, hose. Once you first do that, you'll be able to watch this level. It'll drop. You'll have to add more oil. Uh, do the same thing until uh, you get very little change anymore. And then you should start trying the... Uh, uh, you know, full range of motion with the motor running to make sure that uh, the reef drive will will work, and uh, that indicates that the whole system has been bled out. All right, uh, we'll go over a few more things probably in another video pertaining to uh, the clutch and brake on this lathe. This is a really uh, sweet lathe; it uh, actually works quite well. I'm very happy with the uh, condition of it. I bought it from uh, someone uh, that had been in a school and had been uh, messed up. The back gear was actually messed up on it probably very early in its life. Uh, I'm guessing some student uh, cranked it into a back gear while it was running at high speed and uh, twisted actually this shaft. Uh, because that damage had occurred, I was able to get the lathe with almost no wear on it. So uh, this thing is, uh, the ways on it are incredibly good and so is the drive system. So it's actually a good lathe, but we'll go over uh, some of the uh, features on this lathe probably in another video. I just wanted to mention how to, an easy way to bleed out these lines. This is Lucas signing off. Bye.